have to hold them and let it transfer through your arms. There's a vortex back up in there that is just phenomenal. It's by far one of the most potent ones I've ever done yet. In fact, every tree that's there as it spiraled, it's like a hurricane got it and spiraled that it's so intense. And why do these trees grow in a spiral motion? Well, when you have spiraling magnetic energy leaving the ground and you have a tree growing on top of it, at a molecular level, an atomic level where you have electrons, protons, etc., negative and positive, that magnetic energy is spinning. So it makes the cellular structure of the tree grow in unison with the energy that's flowing out and through it. It's just aligning the tree to the direction of the electromagnetism that's hitting it. Nature responds to earth energies, especially to vortex energy. So when you have a look at trees that twist or grow or lean forward, for example, you can bet that there's going to be a vortex present. For example, at Wayland Smithy, which is surrounded by some of the most beautiful beech trees, there's one at the far end that grows in a twisted manner. That's indication of a vortex. Then if we travel to ancient Egypt by Shekmet's temple, again, a, tw a twisted tree, and you get this in Sedona. Behind us are some twisted trees, and for years now, for over two decades coming here, I have found more often than not, if you find a juniper tree or any other type of tree that's growing in a twisted manner, the trunk of it, every time I set up at the base of that trunk, I would have intense magnetic activity. And that's what we're doing here today because we have two twisted trees and they're both twisting in the same direction clockwise as they grew. So we have the magnetic sensing system there to test for magnetic vortex energy. And so far, I'm seeing subtle and a few very intense outflowing impulses of magnetic energy. Okay, I'm still calibrating equipment, but look at this huge surge. That is a very intense outflowing surge again. And it's going to go off screens, but I got to finish calibration of the equipment and then start recording. We just saw a very intense magnetic outflow. I call them sudden magnetic out impulses. Here's the first one going in a positive direction. That tells me this is an outflowing vortex. If it were going down, it would be an inflowing vortex. And we have it happen twice. This is intense, outflowing magnetic energy emitting from the ground here and here. As a tree grew, it was subjected to a magnetic wind and it just kept making it grow in a spinning direction. So if you're up in Sedona, or anywhere for that matter, and you see trees that are normally straight, but if you find one that's twisted, spiraling, that's probably a, a very high magnetic outflow, or as they say up here, a vortex. Do you think that an inflow vortex would be less likely to be able to achieve the twisting Unknown. tree? I don't know. Well, I think if you're in an inflowing vortex, the tree would spin in the opposite direction. It would grow spinning in a counterclockwise instead of a clockwise direction. So that's something I've seen here, but I have not validated that theory yet with my equipment. But that'll come. It'll happen. Are you basing that theory on the fact that these are these trees behind you are growing in a clockwise direction yes. and we're seeing that it's an outflow? outflow? Yes, absolutely. The electrical engineer, Ben Lonetree, who we've been working with here in Sedona, talks about the spiraling of trees that are on energy vortex locations. Uh, there are various examples of this and here is one. Uh, we're on Bell Rock and here is the trunk of what's quite clearly a tree that's spiralled and spiralled round. And of course this is a process that takes 
a long time, you know, perhaps even hundreds of years. So it gradually builds its own form around the shape of the geomagnetic energies. And to find it actually here on one of the most important energy vortex locations in Sedona, I think is very interesting indeed, and could therefore be an example of how the energies affect life itself. Some of these um, trees that spiral around are also struck by lightning. Is there a, yeah. a relationship between well, the, the gonna... energy and lightning? Well, two schools of thought here. Since you have Fe203 and you also have concentrations of magnetite rocks ore up here, either the lightning is attracted to that or the lightning is attracted to where a vortex is actually outflowing. And it's very possible because it's all electrical magnetic energy. Even a bolt of lightning is an all-pure electricity. It also has a magnetic component too. So if you have a vortex putting out energy, it stands the reason that lightning would come down land in that area or hit a tree that's growing on that Absolutely. area. As you can see, for the most part, magnetic energy is right along the middle of the graph. Here is some outflowing magnetic energy and I can make that a little bigger. You can see a nice peak here and you can see nice outflowing magnetic energy there. And then if we scroll forward it continued along nice and stable then it took a dip. That's indicates inflowing vortex energy then it tries to return to normal up at baseline in the middle of the chart there's a couple little sudden magnetic impulses then it takes a dip then it comes back up to outflowing magnetic energy more outflowing but then here's more outflowing but look at the overall chart and the overall activity the magnetic energy, instead of holding up here on baseline, right down the middle, is taking a huge downward dip. And it gets so much it goes off scale. So I have to change configuration in the chart so we can track it and follow it. So we headed in a downwards motion. Here we tried returning back up to normal. Remember, overall, it's trying to get up here to the middle of the chart. Now this is a very, what they call, short wavelength. It's not electrical. It's magnetic, but very short wavelength magnetism and it's going primarily in a, in a positive direction. You have one spike going in a negative direction. Um, I do not see this happen that often, but it was happening by the twisted trees. So it's a very interesting area. Magnetically, as you can see, it's trying to head back up to baseline again, but watch what happens. It makes it back up to baseline and it goes up real high again, then it takes a dip below baseline, then it goes back up again. So the energy between the two twisted trees and what the trees have been subjected to while they're growing has been a very unstable magnetic field in the ground, in the area they're located. Uh, interesting spot, very interesting. Um, I have to say when I was in that area I had to watch my step when I was on a hill because I had a slight sense of vertigo. I had to keep an eye on my balance and that undoubtedly more than likely is due to the very unstable magnetic field between the two twisted trees. Really an interesting place, spot and as you can see the energy is all over the place. It's up real high, then it goes down real low. This would almost tell me that because it went below baseline, it became inflowing magnetic energy. And then it went above baseline, becoming outflowing magnetic energy. 
And like I said, there is a lot going on in the area of the two twisted trees. If you look at this chart recorded at my home where there is no vortex activity, it's relatively flat. Amplitude or signal strength, if you want to call it, it, it it's pretty small and it remains flat line. It's not up, it's not down, there's no magnetic surges, positive direction or negative direction. It's pretty quiet.